Right. So this is IJDR sample paper, set two, test of basic mathematics. If A is a square matrix of order N, order N basically means that I have N rows and N columns, okay? Now determinant K into A, K into A is basically multiplying each and every element of the matrix by K. So each and every element of this first column is multiplied by K, second column multiplied by K, third column multiplied by K. When it comes to the determinant, what will happen is this will become K to the power N if I take it out because I get a K from each and every column. So the answer will be K to the power N determinant A. So determinant K A is equal to K to the power N determinant A. That's the answer. Solve the equation 4x plus 23 mod is equal to 4x minus 9. See, the value of 4x can only be in this particular uh, fashion that 4x will be basically the mean between 9 and 23. 9 and 23, the mean will be uh, 16. Okay. So, what has to be uh, subtracted from uh, 23 to make it uh, 16, that's minus 7. And if I put minus 7 here as well, I get minus 7 minus 9, the modulus of that becomes 16. So minus 7 should be the value of 4x that will make both these as the same. And hence the value of x will be minus 7 by 4 which will basically satisfy this equation. That's your answer, number four. Okay. Right. The common region represented by the following inequalities. This is a repetition of the question that we had earlier in set one, which I did in the last week. You can also see the video on YouTube. This basically gives us a quadrilateral that's your answer okay you just have to draw the inequalities it will look like something like this so to so need this 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 and this this will be four-sided and i will put the answer as a quadrilateral when do i say that a matrix is a positive for definite semi-definite, so on and so forth. That we can only say after we find out the eigenvalues of a particular matrix. What is a eigenvalue? You make a characteristic equation and you set the determinant to be equal to zero. So here in this case, we have two minus two, two, two minus two, lambda i is basically lambda zero, zero, lambda is equal to zero. So the determinant value of minus two minus lambda two, two minus two minus lambda is equal to zero. Now, if I solve the determinant value of this will be minus of two plus lambda into minus of two plus lambda that basically makes two plus lambda whole square minus four is equal to zero. So that basically gives us two plus lambda whole square is equal to four. So in other words, either lambda is equal to zero or lambda is equal to minus four because four is equal to two square, four is also equal to minus two square. So the eigenvalues here are zero and minus four. So quite clearly, it will be negative semi-definite because if the eigenvalues are all less than equal to zero, then it will be negative semi-definite less than zero it will be negative definite, greater than equal to zero, it will be positive or semi-definite and no prizes for guessing if lambda i's are all positive, it will be positive definite, okay? So here in this example, it is zero and minus four. So the answer is negative semi-definite, okay? And that's how you find out the positive and the negative definiteness and the semi-definiteness. Okay. Now let's take a look at question number five. So now we go into differential equations. Okay. Differential equations. 
you will uh, basically uh, learn the theory as I solve the problems. Okay. The particular solution of this equation. Now, what is a particular solution? D2y dx2 plus y is equal to zero. This differential equation has a particular solution. You can also check this out. It has a particular solution of two cos x, supposing. Right, so you can easily see that dy dx is equal to minus 2 sin x and d2y dx2 is equal to minus 2 cos x. So d2y dx2 is equal to minus y. So d2y dx2 plus y is equal to 0. So this particular equation is being satisfied by y is equal to 2 cos x. Okay, but please check this particular uh, differential equation will also be satisfied by y is equal to a cos x plus b. Okay. Right. Basically a is equal to 2 and uh, b is equal to 0 will give us this form. So this is the general form. This is the particular form. Right. So whenever anyone actually asks you what is the particular solution? It's basically only one of the many solutions that are possible. What is a particular solution? Particular solution is basically one of the many solutions that are possible. Okay. So here instead of arbitrary constants A and B, I have taken arbitrary constant A is equal to 2, B is equal to 0. Okay. So now is this clear? What is a particular solution? What is a general solution? I hope that is okay now. So in this particular case, we go by options. Very simple. We see that option number three will satisfy. How will it satisfy? Firstly, there is a printing error in the question. This will be plus t square instead of the minus t square. Okay. So dy by dt if y is equal to this dy dt will be 2t plus 2 minus y will be t square plus 2t plus 2 plus t square you will see that <clears throat> everything will cancel out and i will have that this equation is holding for this particular solution so the answer is t square plus 2t plus 2 Okay, the solution of this equation, this is the equation. So dy minus, you can easily see that this will be 1 plus x plus y common to 1 plus x dx is equal to 0. <coughs> dy minus 1 plus x into 1 plus y dx is equal to 0. So I get integration dy by 1 plus y is equal to integration 1 plus x dx and I have the constant of integration. So the answer will be log 1 plus y is equal to x plus x square by 2 plus c. That's number 2. Okay. A simple uh, differential equation uh, question. Okay. The general solution of this now, this is an important form. This is basically the form dy by dx plus py is equal to q. Whenever I have a differential equation in this form, I find out something called integrating factor. What is an integrating factor? Integrating factor is e to the power integration p dx. This is the integrating factor. Once I find out the integrating factor for this, what I get is y multiplied by integrating factor is equal to integration q into integrating factor dx plus c. This is the general solution. Please note it down. If ever I have a differential equation in this particular format, I can find out the integrating factor as e to the power integration p dx 
and hence I get y into integrating factor is equal to integration q into integrating factor dx plus c. Okay. Right. So we use the same thing here. Here, this is of the format dx dt plus px is equal to q. It's of this format. Okay. So the integrating factor will be e to the power integration 2 dt, which is e to the power of 2t. So once we know the integrating factor, then we find it out in this way x into integrating factor is equal to integration of c into integrating factor dt plus some integrating constant so x into e to the power 2t is equal to c into e to the power 2t by 2 plus d okay so x will be equal to c by 2 plus d into e to the power minus 2t now by taking proper constants, we can basically write this entire equation as a into e to the power minus 2t format. We uh, do this all the time. Whenever we have y is equal to log some x by 2 plus the integrating constant, we take it as log c. So then we can add it log cx by 2. Right. You take it in this way. So all the time we make such manipulations. Similarly, you can make a similar manipulation to make this entire thing as a constant multiplied by e to the power minus 2t. And that's your answer. That's the general solution. Okay. That's how we get this. Great. <clears throat> Right, number eight, what is the minimum value? Fx is equal to this. So f dash will be four plus x plus x square whole square four plus x plus x square minus x into one plus two x. This is equal to zero. What have I done? A u by v format and I have basically differentiated it. So what do I get? 4 plus x plus x square minus x minus 2x square is equal to 0 because the denominator cannot be equal to 0. Okay. So this cancels out and I get 4 minus x square is equal to 0. So x is equal to plus minus 2. This will be the maxima or the minimum for this. Right. Now let's check the double derivative. Double derivative is minus 2x which will be negative for x is equal to 2 and it will be positive for x is equal to minus 2. So x equal to minus 2 is a minima. x is equal to plus 2 will be a maxima. Now most of you will be thinking sir but the interval is minus 1 to plus 1. I will come back to your question. Okay. It is important for us to find out the maxima and the minima and I will actually tell you why. So the minima is at x is equal to minus 2 and the maxima is at x is equal to 2. So if I have a minima at x is equal to minus 2 and a maxima at x is equal to 2, I can easily find out the shape of the graph. Shape of the graph will be something like this. This is minus 2, this is plus 2. Okay. What will happen is I hit a rock bottom at minus 2 because minus 2 is a minima. Then I'm increasing, increasing, increasing. Then I hit a maxima at x is equal to plus 2. And then I again go down. So this is approximately the graph. This is approximately the graph. This is where x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, why is knowing the shape of the graph important? Because one thing I have come to know now, between minus 1 to plus 1, the function is always increasing. You can also verify this. F dash was equal to 4 minus x square. Right? This is 
positive between minus one to plus one. If it is positive, that basically means that the function is always increasing between minus one to plus one. If the function is always increasing between minus one to plus one, where will I get the maximum value? The maximum value will be got at plus one because it's always increasing. So I put x is equal to one, so I get one by four plus one plus one, which is one by six, and that's your answer. Clear? Question number nine. Find dy dx. X log x will be log x plus one. Y log y will be one plus log y. Dy dx is equal to zero. So my dy by dx is equal to minus of one plus log x by one plus log y. Now you don't find it in any of the options. So what do you do? Please think log one is log e. Log e plus log x is log e x. So it's minus log e x by log e y. That's your answer. Problem. The answer will be zero. As you will be able to see that whenever x is between one. To five, this will look like the function will look like x minus one minus x minus five. So this will be equal to four. So basically, the function is equal to four between one to five, and hence the derivative between one to five will be zero. And if you want to draw the graph, it will look something like this. <clears throat> Something like this, where the king points happening at one and five. Okay. Okay.